Let's take a hypothetical situation. Let's say I'm going to be dropped off in the wilds of Canada or Alaska where there's a lot of big game and I have to try and fend for myself and survive for 30 days at which time I'll be picked up. Now I'm given a ladle dart. It's a pretty good one. It doesn't have a stone point on it. I'm given a nice at ladle so I have some hunting equipment here. I'm given some nappable rock and a wine bottle. Unfortunately it's empty. And I'm also given some napping tools. However, I have to choose only one of these tools and I have to leave the others behind. Which one am I going to choose? So I've got to make a choice from these five tools. I've got a, a whitetail deer antler billet, got a punch, got a copper bopper, got a copper pressure flaker, an antler pressure flaker, and a hammer stone. So let's take a look at the antler first. The rocks that I've been given are pretty good, but uh, they're pretty much nodular and blocky. This is Montana agate, and uh, it just would be just about impossible to try and uh, get into something like that with this. Same for this piece of uh, Texas Pedernelli's uh, flint right here. This nodule, all of those are going to be pretty tough to, to be able to work with something like this. If you had a flake, that'd be a different matter, but we don't. The obsidian, I could probably get into it on one of these sharp edges over here, but it'd be pretty slow going. I'd have to uh, remove quite a large number of flakes. And the glass bottle, of course I could uh, lop the end off of that and work that down, but the glass bottle is probably something, instead of napping it, I believe I would just save that for a water container. As for the punch, that might work pretty good. I could actually use one of these other rocks to uh, hit the back end of the punch with. But again, it's going to be pretty slow, and it's going to take an awful long time in order to make a point, at least for me, using uh, this particular tool right here. The bopper, it's not a bad choice. I might well uh, decide to choose something like that, but as far as the efficiency and the speed and everything, I don't know. It's going to take me a little bit longer to use this than it would uh, one of these other tools over here. I'd really have no way to abrade. I'd have to use one of these other rocks in order to braid my edges. Probably I don't think I would choose this. As for these pressure flakers, well they work great on flakes, but we don't have any flakes. We'd have to somehow detach a flake off of one of these uh, nodules, which we could probably do using one nodule against another, but it's probably going to be thick and chunky. I don't think I would choose this. Yeah, this would be my choice, and for a lot of reasons. Hammerstone is a great tool for getting into large, blocky chunks like this. It's going to be able to open it up. I'm going to be able to produce some spalls and flakes. I can further work those spalls and flakes down into knives and projectile points using nothing more than this tool. It serves as an abrader. It serves as my percussor. It basically does it all, and it does it much faster than any of these other tools alone could do. So I started off using hammer stones over 30 years ago when I first started napping and uh, transitioned over to antler. And a few years later somebody gave me copper and eventually I transitioned over to boppers and ever since I've been looking for that perfect tool that will just, you know, <laughs> it's a magic bullet that will do everything. What I didn't realize is the hammer stone is about as close to that as you can get. It's the most versatile tool in my toolkit anyway and it basically does the entire job from start to finish. It's probably the most underappreciated tool among modern nappers that there is. Okay, we want to discuss some of the uh, qualities that you want to look for in selecting a good hammerstone. Things like hardness, the strength, the overall grain or the grab of it, uh, whether it's homogeneous, the overall shape. There's different shapes that you want to use for different jobs. It's important to carefully select these properties when you're choosing a hammerstone because if you end up choosing the wrong hammerstone, either the wrong shape or the wrong grid or the wrong uh, hardness, whatever, and you know basically it's not going to work very well for you, and you might come to the conclusion that you know hammerstones are not a good tool. So you know if you can make the proper selection in the beginning and get the overall feel for it, and make some progress with it, you can get to that realization that a hammerstone is really a good overall versatile tool. So the first thing I want to discuss is the overall strength and hardness. Now usually a strong rock is going to be a hard rock, but not always. Sometimes you can have very, very uh, hard rocks that are not put together very well. 
So strength, no matter what you're choosing, a soft rock or whatever, you always want a, as strong uh, as possible of a hammer stone as you can get. As for the hardness, here's some varying hard, hardnesses. These here are very, very hard materials, and they're really, really good for the early stages of napping. And this particular one right here, sometimes you'll find a stone that's fairly hard, and after you use it, you'll expose the uh, grittier inside, which is also very hard, but it'll have more grab. We'll get into that in a minute. And then here's a little bit softer of a hammer stone and softer yet. And these are a little bit better for the latter stages of uh, the bifacing process or the napping process. So the grittiness is the next factor we'll look at. And you want to have both uh, not gritty or hard. And you want to have also some really, really gritty ones like that one down there. The way you test that, there's a number of ways, but a good way is to just take and put it on your pants and the feel that it has on the leg of your pants will tell you a lot about that. You can see this soft one here is just pulling up my pants. It's grabbing and it'll do the same thing on, uh, on the material that you're napping. Next thing to consider is the uh, shape and there's three main shapes that I like to look for when I'm out collecting rocks. These disc or flat shaped rocks are really ideal and uh, you can get in there and you can use the edge for setting up your platforms and you can use the face on the platforms for removing large flakes. They're really, really uh, a good shape to look for. These rounder type or egg shaped rocks are also very, very good. I use them probably more for the earlier stages, but I've also been known to use these in the late stages. And the last shape is sort of a more of a pestle shaped uh, or billet shaped kind of a uh, hammer stone. And they work pretty good too. I don't tend to use those as often, although sometimes this will work in a swiping motion. Now hammer stones develop facets from use. And these facets actually add to the value of the hammer stone. They make the hammer stone more useful and more predictable. So that's a good thing, up to a point. All of my hammer stones that I've been using for a long time will develop these characteristic uh, facets on the end. The problem though is sometimes they'll get so faceted and so full of grooves like this one right here that they can actually do more harm than good. So at some point uh, you want to discard them because the facets on here or the little grooves and stuff can catch on places that you don't want them to catch and ruin your biface. So I just want to discuss small hammer stones also. The same qualities apply to these small hammer stones. You want some hard ones and some soft ones. But I think small hammer stones are kind of overlooked as is making these small bifaces. Um, that's all you need. These were just made with these three little hammer stones right here. All of these including the chert ones. You can take materials that ordinarily are discarded, like flakes like this that are kind of chunky, set up a platform on the end and hit them once with a hammer stone and essentially flute them or thin them down with, with just one flake. They're very useful for doing that and it would be pretty tough to do that with any other tool. So uh, keep your eyes open for these small little hammer stones. Um, little bifaces like this can be made in five or ten minutes very easily. It's a lot of fun. You don't waste a lot of material and you can just save chunky materials like uh, these chirts over here that you can find or they're left over in the debitage pile and rather than throw them out uh, go ahead and nap them into bifaces and of course you know spalls like this are going to nap a whole lot easier but it's kind of fun and, and it's good napping practice to take pieces like this and again just set up a platform on the end because these things usually have a ridge running right down the back of them and just remove that ridge one hit okay I'm down here at the beach a few miles away and uh, this is a good place to collect hammer stones. I've been down here quite a few times searching for really good hammer stones. And uh, beaches or river beds, creek beds, anywhere where water and stone have had an opportunity to work together, that's what you're looking for. Something that will round out the stones and uh, give you some good shapes that will be useful for napping. You can see this cliff up here. All these rocks up here have just been eroding away big time. Obviously this cliff is being pushed back and uh, these various types of rocks are washing down onto the beach. Most of them are no good but mixed in are some pretty good uh, sandstones. What you want is a sedimentary type rock 
There's a lot of basalts and metamorphic type rocks in here that are not going to get So unfortunately the tide's coming in and I don't have a whole lot of time over here and I really can't hunt on the beach like I normally do. But take a look at some of these rocks over here. This rock looks good at first glance, but when you look at it closer, you can see that it's it's not a very strong rock. It's not put together very well. I'm not sure what it is. It would obviously have a good grab, but uh, this rock is going to fall apart if you try to use it on anything nappable. This rock is interesting, but it's not going to get it either. The shape's not right, and uh, it's obviously composed of different types of materials. No good. Um, just all, all the wrong shapes. This rock doesn't look too bad, but there's a little fracture right there. You want to stay away from fractures. So there's a whole lot of rocks in here that just aren't going to get to do the job. Well, as this tide continues to uh, come in, I'm running out of the beach here, so uh, probably going to have to pull out here in a minute. I did find a few samples here. I don't know if uh, the sound here is going to come out. I may need to show you these at home, but let's see what we got here. I got some that are good and some that are bad. This is examples of uh, what to collect here. This is a pretty good one. It's got a really nice grab to it. Good green. That's a keeper. This one, the shape is not real good, but uh, it's got a good grab to it. Another good one. I like that one right there. This has got a nice shape. It's kind of hard. This will probably be good for chert. This is a rock that I wouldn't ordinarily use. You can see these little uh, large pieces in there and uh, when those contact the platform uh, it's going to throw off the uh, predictability. So That's a reject. Here's another example of what not to get. The same thing. These little chunks of uh, rock in here are uh, going to throw off the predictability. Same thing here. Interesting rock though. This is a real nice one here for shirt. Sure. It looks to be real, real hard and solid. I like that. That would be a good early stage uh, hammerstone for working hard rock like shirt and flint. This may or may not be good. Kind of looks okay. Not bad. Shape's a little weird, but this one's sort of okay. I don't know. Not bad. Could be okay, it's a little hard. It's no good. Way too smooth. This is basalt. My experience with basalt is it does not make a very good hammerstone. It's a little bit too rough in the texture. It could work, but I don't think it's going to work. It's not one that I would ordinarily choose to use, probably. It's okay, and the shape's not great, but it's a good. It's good material. I like it. This is good and hard. It may or may not be good, but uh, I think I would choose to use that one. Okay, here's all the hammer stones we collected earlier today. There's a lot of good ones in there. Some that aren't so good. So, uh, in a few days or a few weeks, I want to do another video series on using small little hammer stones like this to make these small little bifaces. The support techniques are a lot different than uh, when you're working with larger stuff platforms are very tiny but it's a great way to learn how to use these hammer stones and I'd like to encourage anybody out there especially if you're just starting in an napping to give these hammer stones a try and uh, you know kind of go from there see how you like them that's it